Hey, wonderful people. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's been a while, probably two weeks, I think, uh, since I went live and we connected. Last week was spring break. I believe the week after, before that, I was taking a break because we had done our summit and had been working back to back. So I'm so excited. I had to jump back on here. We're talking about dreams. Some people wait for this part of the year for forever uh, because they, I get to talk about dreams and helping you interpret your dreams and helping you understand the prophetic and all of that. So we are finally at this point in our Ask Dr. Faith journey. Uh, for those of you guys that follow us um, on a consistent basis, for those of you guys who are new, I am Dr. Faith Wokama. I own a company called Ask Dr. Faith, where we create resources for growing Christians so that they can live out their life mission and purpose. So we are getting ready for our wonderful prophetic creative boot camp. I'll tell you guys more about that after I teach. Um, but part of that boot camp is going to include understanding the prophetic, understanding dreams and visions, um, not just specifically because we're going to hit a myriad of topics around the prophetic. But I wanted us to get started on dreams just because, like I said, People always try to slide in those dream questions and things like that uh, when I'm teaching other topics. Uh, but this is the time that we get to uh, talk about them a little bit. So today, I just we're just doing basics. This is intro, uh, understanding the sources of your dreams, where dreams come from, uh, why you may be having them, and then some basic steps around how do you interpret your dreams? How do you know um, that God is the one speaking? And then what do you do when God is not the one speaking? And how do you move forward from that? So we know that the scriptures talk about dreams uh, quite frequently. Um, we I mean, starting from Joseph um, and his dreams, and we read about Daniel and his dreams. Then we read about an unbeliever, um, yeah, King Nebuchadnezzar and his dreams. And so dreams is a common theme, not only in scripture, but in really most other cultures um, and American cultures. I feel like for the most part, Western culture is the ones who have kind of uh, down, watered down what dreams could mean. We have choked it up to more of a psychology meeting and then really um, trying to look and seek out what the scriptural meaning uh, may be, right? And so we know in Acts 2, 17, it quotes, um, it's quoting Joel, but it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. We had put up a post about how part of sign the sign of maturing in the Lord is having dreams. And so visions and dreams in this uh, context is not just, oh, I have a vision of the future. It's literally visions. And so what are visions? Visions are uh, having information either from the Lord or another source while you are awake, but that information is being translated through your eye gates. And so in the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit releases information in the form of pictures. And we see these in our mind's eye. Like I always give the example of a projector. You have the projector, which is the Holy Spirit, and then the projector screen, which is your mind. And so when the Lord is giving you visions, the projector, which is the Holy Spirit, is putting imprints and images on your mind, right? And you can uh, have images that uh, last for a long time, like a movie while you're awake. You can have short uh, glimpses of uh, pictures uh, and visions are all while you're awake. All right. Then you have dreams. Dreams are things that come while you are asleep. And I know that sounds very elementary, but dreams happen in the deepest REM part of sleep. And one of the things we're going to go over in the prophetic creative boot camp that's coming up April 22nd is the various ways that God communicates. We go over like 15 ways that God communicates and how do you break that down? 
But visions is part of the seer realm. Dreams is part of the seer realm. Dreams is what God um, speaks to you or the enemy or yourself while you are in deep sleep. And so we want to talk about the sources of our dreams. There's a number of sources um, in terms of where our dreams are coming from. All right. They can be as basic as you are um, having, taking some sort of medication and that medication is triggering dreams. They can, they can trigger, certain medications can trigger hallucinations. They can trigger delusions, right? The same way certain medication can trigger certain dreams. Then you have hormonal dreams. This is, uh, happens quite quite frequently, even to women, they may be going through their menstrual cycle. They may be going through menopause. Something is shifting within your hormones, which are creating dreams. These are all sources of dreams as well. Then we have the three most common sources, right? And the first source is what we call soulish or carnal or soul dreams. All right. These dreams are coming from your heart and your soul. The definition for soul, or when we use the term soul, we're talking about your will, your intellect, and your emotions. And so a lot of times there are things that we will and things that we want, right? And then they show up in our dreams and we're like, maybe God is saying that's my husband, or maybe God is saying I should move. But if you wake up and you think about your day, you may have already been thinking about that same thing. Most likely it's a soulish dream. Soulish dreams are not bad. It doesn't mean we have to throw them away just because they're coming from your soul. I'll tell you in a minute what you do with them. The soulless dreams can also be your emotions. And so I share all the time when I teach in dreams, there was a season where I kept dreaming about um, uh, bosses of mine, men in leadership, and I was yelling at them. I was so angry. I was yelling at them. And I realized the issue was that I had unresolved issues with my dad. And the bosses and the leaders in those dreams represented my natural father. And because I hadn't communicated how I felt to my natural father, it was now coming up in my dreams and I was projecting it on every man that was in leadership. And we'll talk about symbols and everything in a, in, in, you know, as little, as much as I can give you in a 25 minute live, right? But like I said, we have the prophetic creative boot camp where we're going to go into this a little bit more, specifically Thursday and Friday of the boot camp. Um, and then we have some other trainings and things like that we'll share where you learn and get resources around dreams. <clears throat> so your soulless dreams are telling you what's going on in your life. And they're telling you about the things you haven't processed. They're telling you about the things you haven't dealt with. And I tell a lot of people, and even my dream students right now that are part of our dream um, club, you know, a lot of times when you haven't healed your soul, when you have a lot of unforgiveness, when there's turmoil, when there's pain, the majority of your dreams are going to be soulish. It's going to be really difficult for God to flood in and get in there and, and talk to you about you if your soul and your emotions and all that stuff is in the way. So we have soulish dreams that come from our will, our desires, things we haven't dealt with, things that we've repressed, fears, concerns. That's why we have dreams that we're being chased by stuff, right? Because we have areas of fear. We could have dreams where we're falling and we feel like we'll never hit the ground. We're in a season of uncertainty. Uh, even I just talked to one of my um, mentees who's part of my mastermind and she had a dream about her teeth falling out. Well, that's teeth doesn't have to do with babies. That's to do with wisdom, right? And so usually when people are dreaming about their teeth falling out is the lack wisdom, right? The lack strategy. So your the soulish dreams are not necessarily dreams that you got to throw away but you got to understand why you're having them. It means that there is something going on in your life that needs to be dealt with. And your, your soul is telling you that while you're sleeping. Then we have the demonic dreams. Demonic dreams are directly from the devil. And the devil can have access to your life if you have doors that are open to him. He doesn't have access if there's no doors. And so there's reasons why doors can be open to the demonic, right? We are in sin. We're not repenting from it. We're unwilling to move on from it. We have unforgiveness. We have bitterness. We have uh, practiced the occult, uh, her horoscopes, new age, uh, you know, angel numbers, sage burning, all of this stuff, right? We have opened ourselves up to the occult. We have... Um, 
have somebody in our bloodline, in our family, in our generations that opened up the door into the family. And so now everybody has this dream that they're being chased and eaten by a bear. Well, if everybody in the dream is having that, uh, if everybody in the family is having this consistent dream, most likely there is something going on generationally in your family that has given it permission. Anytime the enemy has access to your life, it means there's a door that's open. There is one caveat. That's when God is trying to teach you warfare. Now you tell that you will be able to tell the difference between a demonic dream, meaning it came from the law, uh, the enemy and a warfare dream, meaning God is trying to teach you how to war because in that dream, you're fighting back in that dream. You're cutting off the dragon's head in that uh, dream. You're rebuking the enemy. If you're running away, if you're scared, if you're paralyzed and you can't move and you can't say anything at night, that is a demonic dream. And it's the same way. And you guys, you can tell I'm very passionate about this stuff. I'm just going, 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 going. But it's the same way with how we interpret God messages. And this is some of the things that we're going to teach during the prophetic creative boot camp, which is if it brings torment and anxiety and fear, it's either from the enemy or it's you, right? The, the nature of God is not one that brings torment. Now he can uh, cause you to see something that makes you be in awe and have a holy reverence of him. But there's a difference between the fear of God and being afraid of God. And I just taught a whole sermon on this at my church on Sunday. So you can watch it at Legacy Center Church if you want to know the difference. So if you have a dream and you're afraid and you're full of torment and you want to run away from God, you're most likely having demonic dreams. If you have a dream and God is showing you things that are to come and mysteries of heaven, and it makes you be in awe, but you are like, I, what does this mean? It's most likely a God dream. So when we have demonic dreams, usually there's a door that's open. Unless we are fighting back, we are, you know, dealing with the enemy. That means God is teaching you how to war. And then we have God dreams. God dreams are dreams that the source is directly from the Lord. Now within God dreams, there's like 20, to 29 different types of dreams. I'm not going to be able to go over that today, but you have dreams of destiny where God is showing you your future. You have uh, dreams of warning where God is showing you that something is going to happen if you don't repent. You have purging dreams where maybe you're uh, in the toilet and you're using the bathroom. That's usually a purging. There's yucky stuff in you and God wants to clean it out. And so even within God dreams, there is sections and there is kinds of dreams in there that God is trying to send a message. 95% of most dreamers, uh, most dreams that most people have, they have to do with them. Most of the dreams that you are having have to do with you and your life. Now, as you mature and as you heal and as you grow in your prophetic gift and as you grow as a believer, if you're an intercessor or if you're a prophet, God may begin to then speak to you about your church or he may begin to speak to you about the city. He may begin to speak to you about your nations. So your metron, which is your sphere of influence or sphere of responsibility, often impacts what kind of things you dream about. Most people are going to dream about themselves, their children, their family, right? But as God grows you in the realm of the spirit and you have more responsibility, you may dream about your job. You may dream about your church, like I said, or the nations, and it grows over time. So most of your dreams are going to be either from you, they're going to be either from the enemy, or they're going to be from the Lord. Now you can get to the point where most of the dreams are God dreams. I don't have very, I don't have demonic dreams, right? Like I don't have demonic dreams. I don't have uh, overt doors that are open to the enemy for him to just be, have the right to come in, right? I always tell this story of one of my mentors. He was this older white gentleman. He was a prophet. I had learned so much from him. And one, one, one night I had a dream that this dark shadow was trying to bite his finger. Well, this finger here is the finger of authority. In the scriptures, it talks about the finger of God. And it was trying to bite his finger. And so I came to him Sunday. I said, um, I called his name, Papa um, uh, Jerry. And I said, hey, I had this dream about you. And this demon was trying to eat your finger. What's going on? He's like, I never have demonic dreams. I haven't had them in years. But last week, I had this sort of infiltration of a dream. And so he, we, when we looked at it, I think there was something that was making him anxious or fearful. And so when you have demonic dreams, it means that there is a doorway, right? There is some sort of hedge that is open. It's not normal. Now, when you're younger uh, or when you're not a 
aware of the supernatural and you're not aware of how these things work, you will have them all the time. So my daughter is a dreamer. And so early on, three, four years old, she'd start having dreams about snakes. She'd have start having dreams about these ugly dark shadows. And so what I did was teach her what it meant to be a child of the light, what it means to be in the kingdom. And I gave her tools and authority to be able to rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus, to be able to cut the dragon's head when it comes and shows up in her dreams so that she would not shut off that portal of dreaming. So what, what the enemy wants to do when you're, when you're young is he wants to scare you by these typical common dreams. I promise you, when I open up for questions, y'all going to ask the same type of question, the same type of dreams, because there is, there's a, a common thread, especially when we haven't grown in the maturity of our dreams and our dream life. And in the realm of the spirit, people will say, what does it mean when you dream about snakes, right? We can break down snakes in various ways, but it's going to mean three or four different things, right? Depending on what kind of snake it is. And the Lord could be showing you that somebody is a snake or there is betrayal that's coming and that can be a God dream. But if the snake is just coming after you and you wake up afraid and you wake up in, in uh, turmoil, then there's probably a door or a breach that is open that is allowing these things to torment you. And so your job is to learn how to take authority of your space. It's to learn how to take authority of your house. Your job is to learn how to commit yourself fully to the Lord. Your job is to make sure that you go get deliverance. You go get get inner healing, make sure that you close out any wounds, any areas where the enemy can have authority. If you have done all that work, you're open and aware of the areas you're struggling, you're bringing them before the Lord, then you can say, okay, God is now trying to teach me how to war. And so then after that, you begin to learn how to pray. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And this is the thing. Dreams are not just a thing. Dreams are a spiritual reality. And a lot of times when dreams are coming from the Lord or dreams are coming from the enemy, you're in a spiritual space. And that's why you can um, have a dream that something was trying to scratch you and you wake up and you actually have scratches because you're not, it's, you're not dreaming. Dreaming is not a thing. It's, it's a, it's a realm. It's a reality. And our spirit never sleeps. Our soul sleeps because that's what needs to sleep. Our body sleeps because that's what needs to sleep. Right. But your spirit, man, it, it should be, um, dedicated to the Holy Spirit, fully invigorated by the power of God. But when we are living one foot in the Lord, one foot outside of the Lord, our soul cannot be submitted to the Spirit of God. And that's where we get these struggles. And that's where we go back and forth in terms of warfare. So there's many sources of dreams, but the most common are the demonic most common are yourself or God. You can get to the point where you don't have demonic dreams. You can have warfare dreams where God is teaching you how to war, where you're flying over a nation and you're dealing with demonic forces over that nation. That's not a demonic dream. That's a God dream. He's teaching you and he's showing you and he's causing you how to deal with those things. So once you have the source of your dream, that's the first thing that you want to do. Like what, what, where could this be coming from? And usually if you don't know, I would put it in the soulish category because you're going to know a God dream. Well, with a little bit of training. Okay. And we're going to give you resources and teach you how to do a little bit of that during the boot camp, and then um, give you further resources. You should know that this is a God dream, right? You should know this is a demonic dream. Those are two areas that should be very clear. It's the soulish ones that confuse a lot of people and cause them to get stuck. And just like any gift, dreaming is a gift. And if you don't cultivate it, if you don't grow it, if you don't invest time, if you don't invest money, if you don't invest your development in growing it, you're just going to be like, I don't know what this means. Or you're going to be like, Dr. Faith, what does this mean? Dr. Faith, what does this mean? Right. And for those that know me that have been following me for years, I don't spoon feed you stuff. I teach you how to do what I do. That is my job. That is the job of a prophet. The job of a prophet is to give you information so you can have a revelation and you can have insight on what the spirit of God is saying and not just what God is saying. All right. So we're going on that journey. Uh, the link to the prophetic bootcamp is in the bio. So just before I take questions, you can get your questions ready, but this is, um, I'm so excited about it because the prophetic realm is the creative realm. When we use the word prophetic, we're talking about the realm in which God downloads messages. For some, they see, for some, they hear, for some, they dream, for some, they sense, for some, they feel. 
it is very impossible. It is not very impossible. It is very improbable that you're going to be a creative that doesn't see, hear, sense, feel. These two realms merge together really seamlessly. And so during our boot camp, which starts April 22nd, we're going to be talking about the fusion of the prophetic and the creative, but as well as especially dreams and visions. Do y'all know that the sewing needle was invented because the the, uh, the the inventor, I forget his name, went to sleep and had this dream that these cannibals, and he had been trying to work on a solution. So this dream is actually what we call a word of wisdom dream. He has this dream that these cannibals are trying to chase him, but these spears have this little hole in them and they're long. And so he wakes up and he has the epiphany that that's what the needle needed to be shaped like in order for the thread to go through so that they can sew, right? And so the Lord gave him a creative solution to a problem in a dream. Inventors, creatives, thinkers, scientists, God is talking to them in dreams all the time. But if they don't know how to like bridge the gap, we lose a lot of what God is saying. And so that is my passion. Oh gosh, I have so many stories to tell you guys during that time. Another one came from a demonic source. It's called the Devil's Trill. It is a uh, um, a composition that this composer put together. But the night before he had a visit from the devil and the devil sat on his bed and he gave the devil his violin and the devil played this piece and he said he could feel it in his body and in his bones while he was sleeping. And he woke up and he could remember parts of that song and he composed it and people have been pray playing it all these years. That's why we'd be like, you need to watch what you're listening to, right? You don't even know the source. And so this is the thing, right? The sources for innovation and creativity can come from any, any realm. And that's why we're having our prophetic creative boot camp. We want to teach you. We want to stretch you. We have amazing speakers. Uh, Apostle Brian Meadows, Dr. Jamon Glenn, and then uh, Mama Cindy Trim. She's going to be joining us Wednesday on the prophetic, on the supernatural, on creativity. And it's free, y'all. We're paying a good, good bucks, right, to have these uh, speakers to you guys to learn more and to learn more about how we can help you guys move forward. So if you have a question, use a hashtag Q. I'm not going to interpret full dreams. So serve your, save your fingers. Don't sit there and be like, I had this dream where I was jump roping and then the rope tied around my neck. And then after that, I turned yellow. What does that mean? But you can feel free to say, what does a lizard mean? right? Or what does uh, this number mean? I will do that, but I'm not interpreting your dreams. I will teach you how to interpret your dreams uh, over the next several weeks. All right. So if you have a question about sources of dreams, where do de dreams come from? How do you handle your dreams? How do you uh, grow in the, in the realm of dreams? You can ask those questions. I had two dreams where a woman, different women were trying to shut my mouth while I was praying in tongues and I had to wake up because I was losing my voice. Well, that's really simple, right? God wouldn't be trying to shut your mouth while you pray in tongues. So then we know that those women were probably what? All right. I had a dream that I was pregnant. I was in the hospital and the nurses were preparing me to give birth, but it never happened. I don't feel like the baby kicking. Is this a warning? Well, you'd want to know what uh, pregnancy means in dreams, right? Pregnancy often has to do with projects or ideas or ministries, right? And then put the thoughts together. If you never were able to give birth, what could that mean? All right. And that's how I'm going to be answering you because I want you all to do some of the work. I want you to pray. I want you to, um, you know, go a little bit deeper. Yeah, flying dreams are very common types of dreams. Flying dreams are usually revelatory dreams if you didn't initiate it. And what I mean by that is we know um, Instagram, just hold on a second. I'm going to answer the folks on Facebook and YouTube, and then I'll go to you guys in a minute. Um, if we know that flying dreams, if you don't initiate it, then it's the Lord. But we know that the occult is always trying to mimic the realm of the spirit. And so we know that people astral project, but in order for people to astral project or levitate, they have to drink potions. They have to cut themselves. They have to do all these things to deities for those deities to give them power. But in a flying dream and you just find yourself flying and free, usually that can represent an ascension or the Lord is taking you higher or he's giving you revelation from a higher realm. All right. I'll go back and forth here. Dragons, dragons are usually not good, right? And so once one of the things you're going to hear me say oftentimes is use common sense. Remember the book of Revelation. Oh, and that's the other thing. You got to read your Bible. You got to read your Bible. Your Bible has full, is 
full of symbols, right? There's a dragon that is waiting to eat the baby that the woman is getting ready to give birth to in Revelations 2. In, in Isaiah, it talks about the dragon, Leviathan, right? So we already have the context that dragons generally are not good. They could be ancestral spirits. They could be demonic spirits, all right? Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, 11 usually just means transition. We're going through transitions. What does judge mean in a dream? Well, what does a judge do in real life? right? Just connect it. Most of this is very common sense. What does a judge do in real life? And then the context of the dream is going to matter as well. What does a dog bite mean if it seems the dog was happy? Well, dog can represent friends. So I'll give you that because you probably don't know that. Dogs can represent friends because they're loyal and they're very kind. And But then what would that mean if the dog now bit you, right? Is it normal to dream in an evening light situation? I'm not sure if I understand the question, but there is something that we call night visions that happen right before you go to sleep and right before you wake up. And that little cusp, the, the most important thing is that your emotions and your will and your intellect are not in the way. You're not overthinking. And so sometimes God can intervene in there and he can drop little messages. Um, are there any books you can recommend? Um, yeah, not only are there lots of books, you can go to my uh, website, askdrfaith.com and go to recommended books. Uh, but during the program, I've written a whole manual for you guys during the Creative Prophetic Bootcamp that you can purchase for $7 that we're going to be going through. And then we're going to share about our Dreamers and Seers Creatives Hub that we're rolling out. And you're going to get lots of materials, lots of books, uh, lots of resources uh, to help you learn. Um, is it normal to dream in the evening light? Okay. Dreaming about being on a farm and people cleaning cow skin that was brownish in color. Uh, there was a man named Isaac. I cannot remember what he's doing. I'll look up the name Isaac. What does Isaac mean? And then you can even look up cows. What, what, what did cows represent in scripture, right? You had the fat cows, the thin cows. What do cows represent in your culture, right? Uh, because it's not, you're not always going to find the meaning within a, um, a book, right? Or, or even biblically, because if you dream about an iPad, there are no iPads in the Bible, but we know that iPads can be used for communication, right? And so you connect those two and you go that way. Um, what does three mean on three clouds, meaning three clouds, meaning singing a song? Well, three is a number of perfection, right? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. So when we know that it means perfection, it can mean Trinity. Um, you would want to start there. But guys, context is king. Right. And so what I mean by that is when you're asking it, So someone can say, what does seven mean? And seven mean, could mean covenant and it could mean perfection and it could mean blessing. Right. But if in the context of um, the Pharaoh's dream, seven years of famine. Right. And seven years of plenty. So the context of that dream also dictates the, the meaning of that number, um, the context of colors. Right. I could have a dream where I see blue and it could mean revelation and insight, but it could also mean envy. And it could also mean uh, a demonic force, depending on the context of that dream. And so you will hear me say often context is king. Visions are much easier to interpret because they're just you're awake, you're seeing them. And visions generally are what they are. The only reason why people People can't interpret visions is that oftentimes they don't have a, 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 um, I don't want to use the word Bible, but yeah, of, of symbols. They don't understand what symbols mean. And so they would, uh, get confused from that. Um, what does it mean when a car was stolen that re that was recovered? Well, you want to learn what cars mean, right? Cars can represent your life. They can represent your ministry, depending on the size of cars. Transportation is a whole category of, um, of what things mean. So it could be, depending on the size of the car, how many doors and all of that. What does a dream about death of an ex mean? Well, he's an ex, right? So maybe he died to you. I would need to know the context. Um, I don't. I would need to know how you feel. Um, and then you can go from there in terms of what that could mean. Um, I keep dreaming of birthing of twin girls. So once again, you ask yourself, I, do I really want to have children? Am I believing for children in real life? If the answer is yes, then these could be soulish dreams that your desire is showing up in your dreams. If you're like, no, I'm not married yet. I'm not really thinking about having kids. And then we can say, okay, well, birth, pregnancy, once again, means carrying something, whether it is ministry or a project or an idea. And if they're twins, it could be two things at the same time. 
Uh, what do dreams about traveling via bus, train, car mean? Yep, once again, each category has symbols. And one of the things you guys will get uh, in our, our Dreamers and Seers and Creative Hub is a symbols book, right? That you get manuals upon manuals. So a bus could mean a ministry, a big one. It could mean a family, right? A train could mean something with force or momentum. So it just depends on the context of what is happening in the dream. Um, 44, I love the number four, um, 44, um, can mean, uh, newness. It could mean, uh, one, one thing that helps is what, uh, looking at what was created on what day. So on the fourth day, God created, God created, let me, um, pull it up here. The sun and the moon and the stars, right? Water, the sky, the animals were made on the fourth day, right? So God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. It was a day of creation. There was a separation. So four generally means creation. You're probably in a season of blossoming or blooming or newness in that season. What does a hamster mean in a dream? It could mean anything, right? If the hamster is eating uh, through your house, it could mean you have uh, something that you've let into your house that is eating through your money, right? If it's eating through a wallet. Uh, if the hamster is a pet, it could mean uh, something that you're entertaining. Hamsters are like rats. I know we think they're very cute, but generally there would be something yucky or something that you've let in that you're entertaining, but it, we would need to know the context of what exactly is happening happening. What do proposals mean? Well, what does a proposal mean in real life, right? That could mean an invitation into a covenant, right? It could mean literally or something is inviting you to come into covenant or an agreement. Animals is a whole discipline in itself, right? So there's whole books out there, uh, Understanding the Dreams That You Dream by Ira Milligan. There is the uh, Divinity Code by Adam, I can't remember, and his friend who wrote, like, it, there's books upon bits. This is stuff that you can just look up. Animals Animals from uh, cows, meaning prosperity, to dogs, meaning friend or evil spirit, to lizards, meaning, you know, something slithery. Foxes can be conniving. And you also want to just think about their character. Like, what is the characteristics of this animal and what is it doing in the dream? All right, I'll take like three more and then I'll be heading off. Two dreams of tornadoes headed towards me, but one went left and broke up. So usually weather dreams have to do with your emotions. And if you check your emotions and say, I'm not afraid of anything, I'm not worried, I don't feel like things are topsy-turvy, I don't feel like things are all over the place whirling around in my life, then you can say, okay, this might be a literal tornado that is coming. But most of the times when you have dark dreams about tornadoes, storms, it's about either internally, that's how you feel inside, or something is coming that you need to pray against. I'm a prophet and I dream almost every night, always seeing something new. I pray, but I want to develop more ex uh, exactly how to handle the different things I see. Yeah, please join us in the Prophetic Creative Bootcamp and then um, you learn about our um, trainings that we do to help people learn how to interpret, how to grow in their prophetic gift, how to grow as prophets. Uh, we'll be releasing all of that end of April. So people have been asking me about prophetic training and all of that. We have our School of the Prophets that happens uh, once a, the, a year, but this uh, our Dreamers and Seers club is expanding and we're going to go into developing into the prophetic throughout the year and then culminate um, with the addition for those who want to attend our school of the prophets. So um, if you, if you think you're prophetic, if you are a prophet, if you think you have a prophetic gift, if you're not sure, I would encourage you to be trained and developed to get answers, to get insight, to get mentored, to get coached. When you steward your gift, God can increase your, uh, your sight. He can increase what he's giving you. He can increase your information, but he's not going to keep adding to a plate of things. And you don't know what to do with those things. He's not, he's not the type of God who will overwhelm you for the sake of overwhelming you. And if you're having a bunch of dreams and you're still not able to really interpret them, it's most likely because they're very simple, but you don't know how to do it. And so you've got to get around other people who know how to do it, who can help you grow in that area. All right. Cheryl is part of our Dreamers and Seers Club. And uh, she's saying that she's learned a lot. So we're going to be teaching you, showing you guys more about that in a little bit. All right. I'll take two more questions and I'm done. Dreaming of seeing yourself naked at a gathering. So naked has to do with transparency. You're, you're open, you're transparent, or you're about to be whatever you're hiding, right, is about to be shown. 
Bears um, can be a bear market, right? Russia is also represented by bear, uh, but usually if they're chasing you and they're trying to eat you, it could be a ferocious thing that's in your bloodline, in your generation that is trying to get you. Yeah, seven, we already established that's that covenant and perfection. So if you have seven, 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 triple that, and then you would get what that means. Uh, what about dreams of loved ones harming you? You ask yourself during the day, am I concerned that my family members are trying to harm me? Do I feel like they're against me? Do I feel like they have an issue with me? If the answer is yes, then it's just your soul processing at night the things that you already are feeling during the day. All right. I had a dream of a guy I know, then saw a certificate that said ex-husband. Well, maybe the Lord is saying not to marry him, right? Because he might be an ex-husband to you. God spoke to me in a dream that he would uproot the seats out of the church, all right? Which church? Is it your church? Is it the body of Christ, right? And then if it's the body of Christ, which is his bride, would he really be uprooting all the seats out of the body of Christ? Or does this have to do with a specific denomination? Does it have to do with a specific stream, right? That's how you got to think through these things. Um, and especially if we like to run and post stuff on social media, right? God is uprooting the seats out of the church. Well, he's not uprooting the seats out of our church because he just told us we're in a season of favor. We're in a season of wonder. We're in a season of establishment, right? So it might be your church or it might be uh, a denomination. And so you want to get that clarity when you're getting uh, certain information. Childhood homes, that's another common dream. And usually that has to do with your past. Anytime you dream about your childhood home and even your house levels mean something. Basement um, has to do with things that are hidden, uh, that are buried deep, right? The floor on uh, the, the main floor for most houses, each room means something. Kitchen is uh, family orientation. Bathroom means cleansing, right? So it depends on what's happening in the dream, where you are in the dream. The attic can represent memories. People put pictures and things that are old. So it would depend on the context. It would depend on the flow of the dream. All right. So I hope you guys are excited and you're ready. We're going to be talking about dreams uh, and visions and the prophetic over the next several weeks. And then we want you to join us in our prophetic creative boot camp where we're going to be talking about how all of this fuses together, how it impacts how we do our jobs, how we see the world and all of that as well. So that's free. You can sign up for VIP or we're calling it the lounge. And so after every night session with one of our speakers, we're going to go in there and have discussions. We're going to answer your questions and all of that stuff. And then you also have the opportunity to get my book, $7 on prophetic creativity that I've put together for this uh, boot camp. All right. I look forward to talking to you guys very soon. I'll probably go live a couple more times uh, over the next several days, just because the boot camp starts on the 22nd. And I want you guys uh, to be aware that it's going on. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.